But the whole, well, most of the house was destroyed by fire in 1953 and uh, had a massive fire in there. So a lot of it's been rebuilt, but there is some of it that still, um, still exists. But it is a fascinating place. So come really along been... with us and we'll see yep. what Florence Quarter is all about. It's a National Trust property, so uh, we can get in for free, well, for the price of the membership every year. <laughs> That's right, we'll do make quite a good use of it, so yeah, yeah it seems worth it. Yeah. Turn right onto A32. Yeah, yeah. Suitable for HGV traffic. Okay, it's a little bit worrying. Nice here. Nice, not too bad, isn't it? We'll fit through the gate, we'll be all right. Yeah, no height barrier. Closed on Monday. A little bit tight through the gate. Yeah, there, I was going to say it is a bit. Just keep going. Yeah, mission point ahead. Not too bad. You're going on the tour, aren't you, at 11.20? Yeah. I just said that. No, you did well. We weren't recording, so oh, you uh, just said it for me. Oh. Mile, turn left <laughs> onto the road. All right. Sport for choice, eh? I think we're about the only ones in the car park. Looks like the tea room and everything's closed. Doesn't open till 11. Oh, doesn't it? Okay. No. Loads of walks here, so. And where we are. Are we there? Is that us there? Yeah, the oh, wow, one of those huge, car park. It? it is huge, yeah. 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 The mansion is, lost it again. Nine is there. So we're there, so we're going to go to the right, we think. Florence Court ki Kitchen Garden, a working garden brought back to life. Okay, one well, of the most peaceful and productive parts of the estate, apparently. Allegedly. <laughs> <laughs> go on then, but We've got some apple trees here, I think they're finished, don't they? A bit like Looks ours. Like our trees, isn't they? Oh, the pear trees. Oh, yeah, sorry. Apples here. Cherries. Oh wow, it's quite an orchard, isn't it? It's Rose Cottage. It's built in 1840. This is where the head gardener and his family lived. Right. So, so there are people living in there then. It's like it, yeah. Okay. Oh, Look, pops. <laughs> Bees. Wasp attack. There's some wasps there. Yeah, it's lovely, isn't it? Is it maple? I think so. I'm looking at the leaves. Yeah. Dahlias. Yeah. A dahlia cactus mix. Yeah, and handily somebody's put a label on them. Yeah. 
I mean, it's a cross between a cactus and a... <laughs> can't see any cactus. It looks a little bit, doesn't it? It's what its head is a bit like a cactus flower, yeah. isn't it? Yeah, sort of. No idea what that means. <laughs> it's a lot cool there. This was just a yeah, bugs and bee hotel, isn't it? Yeah. Now we've got some uh, banana, Moroccan apple, eau de cologne, grapefruit, strawberry, chocolate, spearmint, cinnamon. Oh, we've got all sorts here: basil and black peppermint. A little river just outside. Said, but uh, I'm going on the house tour and uh, Jenny's going to look after Poppy and she might take her for a little walk. So, presumably, it's a guided tour, so I don't know if they'll let us film, but we'll see. There's plenty of signposts once you get up here, anyway. Google in there. Oh, quite something. The stables. Upstairs. Well, that's quite something. I suppose he's opened all the uh, the shutters. Quite an impressive place. Yeah. It's a big blaze here. Mm. <laughs> that was extremely interesting. Uh, I couldn't show you much of the tour. They asked not to take any pictures, and I assume they mean don't take any photos either. But the whole, well, most of the house was destroyed by fire in 1953 and uh, had a massive fire in there so a lot of it's been rebuilt but there is some of it that still um, still exists but it is a fascinating place and uh, obviously seeing all the pictures the Cole family as the uh, the people are responsible I think what I might do I, I did take some quick shots whilst I was in there obviously can't put them on YouTube but uh, I will have a look around and I'll try and talk you through some of the um, the rooms and some of the stories we're being told. And perhaps I'll do that a little bit later. But I'm going to go back to the van now and uh, catch up with Jenny while I'll have a little walk around. And uh, I've got to figure out which way to go now. That way. But yeah, no, it was very interesting and well worth a visit if you're coming this way. You can't beat a decent cup of coffee. No, this never let us down, has it? Never you know, gone wrong or anything, using that. No. It's brilliant. Just going to go down the, the blue walk. Here we go, this way. It says blue walk, doesn't blue it? Blue walk, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Just so we seem to be going back on ourselves. Yeah. It'll take us around the field or something, but it, it is nice here. Eh? It's lovely. Nice walk for Poppy. Yeah. It's a shame that I can't bring you anything from the house. I suppose it, it's, it's strange isn't it, if you, if I, probably if I'd gone round on my own and just filmed it or perhaps read from the you know the printed guide, probably no problem. You go yeah. round on a guided tour. I could sort of understand, understand it you know that the, the, the tour guide doesn't want their 
guide the guided tour completely filmed and no because otherwise people wouldn't pay to go on a tour would they no that's saying, right. we've been to places like that before we've gone on a tour and they've said you can't film yeah. otherwise they don't know everyone wouldn't bother going on it would they no well the one that always sticks to my mind is melrose abbey and i asked the guide then oh do yeah do you yeah. mind being filmed and he said oh yeah no problem no problem no that's right so i think i suppose it's you know down to yeah, well, they may not, the person who's doing the tour may not want to be filmed for the start. No, and that's possibly, you know, one of the things, isn't it? Yeah. So, so we could have had your, just your tour, really, couldn't we? Yeah, well, that's right. We could have had <laughs> Poppy's tour if no, Poppy was allowed in there. <laughs> not in the house. <laughs> no, very <laughs> not. And I was just telling Jenny about the house burning down in the 50s and uh, on a, a lady... Uh, Cole, I think. Cole was the name of the people, yeah. Yeah. She was asleep in one of the bedrooms just off, off the landing and she saw a light on under the door and thought that someone had left one of the newfangled electric lights on. Oh. They'd only just had electric lights installed in the 50s and, uh, and they, you know, they resisted lights, electric lights and heating and all that sort of thing for ages just had the electric uh, lighting installed and of course it was an electrical fire oh. and it destroyed most of the house it sort of took the took the roof out and all all the floors and everything and she woke up to seeing these sheets of flame just outside the bedroom door oh she ran across the landing and down the the back stairs and of course no telephones either no no, so, no, no mobiles. So I had to run down the road to find the nearest telephone. Yeah. And uh, try and alert the fire brigade. So that obviously, by then, that most of the house was sort of virtually destroyed. The staircase, funnily enough, wasn't destroyed. But uh, all the roofs came down and everything. So a lot of what we saw in the house is reconstructed. There are some rooms that are original, some 17th century rooms. I think the library was one of them. And uh, but a lot of the um, buildings were rebuilt by the National Trust from what photographs they had of the original place uh, as best they could. That's why I read there weren't many records of how, what the building, you know, the original building. Is That's it 1780, right. something like That's that? That's right, yeah. I mean, the outside was obviously the same. It was the yeah. Palladian style. And the two outbuildings on the end of it are, um, are uh, like well they're not connected to the house they're just connected via a, a walkway sort of outhouses really and there were the kitchen and the well one one room was used as the uh, as the as the bottle store <laughs> so, uh, one, of, one of them was very keen on the wine had a huge bottle store but yeah, this was fascinating. I'll tell you more as I remember it. <laughs> <laughs> it's in there somewhere. Yeah. It's obviously a beautiful place. You can see that mountain again through there, can't you? The one with the flat top. The one that we kept go went along, didn't we? Yeah. yeah. Yesterday we went round the other side. Okay, no idea what that is. Ladies well. Okay. Well, there's a well here then, presumably. Something okay. here about yeah. it. Well, Used no. to supply the drinking water to the house until at least the 1940s. Oh, good grief. It's brought up, the water was brought up to the house as often as required by an old man wearing a yoke and harness who dragged it up in a large swing bucket slung on a carriage with two iron wheels. Oh, good grief. Grief. It's down there, presumably. Mm. It doesn't look very hygienic to me. What do you reckon, Pops, eh? You'd drink it, wouldn't you? He was, his name was Frank Mulligan, and he, but he was always called Trink Trank after the crazy noise made by his contraption. Trink Trank. <laughs> oh, so he'd have to, as soon as they wanted water, you have to be off again then. Yeah. Bit of history, Poppy. Come here, Pops. Come on. Bit of history. 
Captain William Cole came to Ireland as part of Elizabeth I's army in 1601. He oversaw the creation of Enniskillen and its strategically important location on Loch Erne and lived in Enniskillen Castle where okay. he went the other day. Right. And he became provost and then governor. Many generations of the family continue to be involved in the governance of the area and as members of parliament. A century later, his descendant, Sir John Cole, 1680-1726, built a lodge to the southwest of the town and named it after his wife, Florence. Florence, yeah. We saw a picture of Florence in, in, the, uh, in the house. The house he built in the 1720s was not fortified as early 1700s were a time of relative peace. The present uh, Florence Courthouse we see today was built by Sir John's son, also called John, yeah. who was raised to the peerage as Lord Mount Florence in 1760. The house was still unfinished at the time of young John's death. The colonnades and pavilions were completed by his son, William Willoughby Cole, who became Earl of Ellis Guinea in 1789. Right. So that's the early history. We were taken into the servants' quarters, or the, the downstairs part of it, which is underneath the house. And they, all the sort of things that the servants had to do were under, underneath the main house, mainly because it wouldn't disturb um, the important guests above. So, um, so it's sort of in a, in a basement on, on a long corridor. And they took us down to, well, all, all the, the kitchen area, the servery, uh, and various places where they polish the brasswork and all this sort of thing. But the servants' dining hall, as it was called, was quite interesting. And she said that the servants generally were fairly young, so most of the servants, apart from the butler and the head cook and that, were probably all about 16, 17-year-olds, so boys and girls. So boys on one side, girls on the other. The butler at one end of the table and the head cook at the other end of the table to try and stop them. And it was very much like uh, upstairs, downstairs. Or Downton Abbey. Or Downton, Ab Downton Abbey, yeah. Yeah, that's what sprung to mind. The other thing was that uh, the family, um, the Coles family, obviously lived here for generations. They were from uh, a, a family, of, well, the original family came from England and they were settlers, of course. And they lived in the house until the 70s, I think she said 72. And of course, by that time, the troubles had started. So that's, that's when they sort of left it. They did still visit the house occasionally, in some arrangement with the National Trust, but uh, I think they stopped coming around about that time. Probably for understandable reasons, I guess. Just want to see how big this tree is. Yeah. It's fairly tall. Little bridge. Got to go right, Poppy. Yeah, you're doing a right here, Pops. Yeah. <laughs> Little bridge with a concrete tunnel underneath. Go on then, we're following the signs, Pops. Oop. Yeah, there's the house. Now, Pops, you can build a den in here if you want. Get creative, build a den. Off you go, Pops. No? Okay. No, okay. <laughs> want you to do it for her. <laughs> More of a river here. First signs of autumn coming. Some of the leaves turning here. Yeah. Here grows the famous Irish yew. Texas Bacatica el Fastigiata. I wasn't going to attempt that. <laughs> <laughs> the original mother plant of countless thousands of Irish yews found across the world. Previously unknown species, it was discovered here in 1767 by George Willis, a tenant of the first Earl of Enniskillen. Okay. And a little, uh, I think that says the same thing, doesn't it? And it said, cuttings were taken from this tree and propagated 
from about 1780, though it was not widely available until 1820. The parent tree is female, and though male trees have occurred, the resulting seedlings do not usually show the fastigate form. Thus, propagation has been entirely by cuttings, and all the Irish ewes commonly seen in the states and churchyards in the British Isles and further afield are descendants of this tree. Well, the mother has grown more open and less column, column, columnar than the typical Irish ewe, owing to the enormous cuttings taken from it and the shade of the surrounding trees. Well, just in, forgot, in case we forgot where we were. <laughs> <laughs> little tractor over there. <laughs> there we are, that's the house again. All right, onwards, Pops. Go on then, off you go. Yeah. It's quite a walk, this. I said two miles. Oh, is it two miles? OK. The pleasure grounds. That sounds, sounds like something from Frankie Goes to Hollywood, doesn't it? <laughs> <laughs> uh, Victorian garden of ornamental trees, shrubs and meandering plants, or paths, rather, created by Mr Fraser for Jane, Countess of Edna Skilling, during the... Uh, 1840s. There's a thatched summer house overlooks the pleasure grounds. Cole family would adjoin to this spot on sunny days to drink tea and join the fine views. Nellie Woolley's grave, a uh, favourite dog of Irene, Countess of Enniskillen, died in 1923. Uh, the sawmill, built in 1848. Hydraulic ram, where water was pumped up to a tank in the roof of the house until 1964 when the house was connected to the public water mains. And the eel house, they used to catch eels in the river, and an ice house. Okay. You see what the sawmill uh, produced? Produced a variety of items ranging from sleepers for the giant causeway tramway. Okay. Wow. Fishing rods and coffins. Yeah. Closed in Close 1953. Yeah. yeah. So. Yeah, <laughs> sort of links in with the causeway, doesn't it? Yeah. Can someone tell us what these are? They're absolutely enormous. I don't know if you're going to get the scale of it, but some of those must be oh, four foot across. Yeah, huge leaves on them. Yeah. Do you know what they are, Pops? No, no idea. Would you? It's the ice house. Oh, right, okay. Do you want to go and have a look at the ice house, Pops? Hey, hey strap a camera to you. <laughs> we'll, we'll both go up there. Go on then. Oh, good grief, puppy. Oh. What's in there then? Hey, nothing? Okay. I can see how this would have been quite cold. Oh, and quite dark. Oh, damn it. Oh, I'll read that. I persuade Jenny to walk across the ford there. Poppy will do it. <laughs> yeah, it's a very nice little bridge here. That was the Eel House Bridge back there, and the Ice House. Well, there was actually a bridge, as well as walking across all those. So yeah, I know, that was the Eel House Bridge. Yeah. There's a hydraulic ram up here, Pops. Looking. It's alright for you, Pops, you don't have to duck. <laughs> What's all that about then, Pops? Eh? Mm -hmm. So it says hydraulic ram was powered by water from the estate's mill pond, which provided pressure to work the ram and pump water uphill to the house and its roof tank. Oh, so it's mill pond, filter stones, feed tank, drive, and then ram house, where is where we are now, and a wastewater pipe and pipe to the house. It was first installed in the 1850s. The ram you can see today in the pleasure grounds was installed in 1958 and ceased to work in 1964 when it was connected to the mains. Uh, get in there. I don't know what you can see there. Blob in the middle. So did they not need that man with the bucket? No, it's no longer needed. Uh, what was it? Trink trank. Yeah. <laughs> oh, 
I put trink trank out of a bit out of business. Yeah. And the mains water put the uh, hydraulic ram out of business. So what's that behind there then? That's mm. the sawmill. All oh, right. Okay. Just round here, I think, is the sawmill. Oh, it's obviously water driven, wasn't it? Another yew tree. That's just about the pleasure gun, but this is the obviously the sawmill then. Yeah. Okay. 1848. Great big water it. wheel. Presumably they must have had to pump water up here to use it. Or did they? I don't know what well, did was... he come? He wouldn't have had to pump <laughs> water up. To no, I think even Mr. Trink Trank couldn't have done that. Ah, there was a reservoir up here by the looks of it that fed it. Have a look at the sawmill first. Ooh. And there is a saw in there as well. Look at that. Ooh. Great big uh, band saw. Wow. Some of the planks there that could have made with it. Right. Well, that would have been driven by the water well. Presumably it was on some sort of pulleys or something from somewhere. Can't really tell. You're oh yeah, great big. This, eh? No, she probably's not interested in this. She says, "Can we get going?" <laughs> There's a great big pulley wheel down there. I'll see that. Obviously drove the the saw. Okay, and it looks like there's like a reservoir or something up here. Deep water it says up there. Yeah. Oh right, yeah. Okay. It's a bit empty this pond now. Yeah. We would have opened the sluice gate here. And let water run along there. Hmm. Don't think it'd be doing much sawing at the moment though. Not with that little bit of water. Hmm. I might be able to get out this way, Joan. Bobby, just a minute, and your excitement to get to the carpenter's shop. Yeah, so this is the carpenter's workshop. Plenty of tools here, I recognise. My granddad was a great woodworker. Yeah, my dad was a carpenter. Yeah, there's a tenon saw there, and a shaving hook, chisel. Hi, Hi. My granddad always had one of those, for shoes, shoes. For, yeah. Well, that was the other job they had to do, wasn't it? Yeah. Files. File, yeah. Drill there. Yeah. Isn't that a drill like the thing with the curly bit at the end? Thing with the curly bit at the end. What? It looks like a drill. Well, this. No, next to it. Uh, oh yeah, yeah. It's an auger drill. Hand. Oh, it's a hand drill. Yeah. 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 Making little wall holes, enamel mugs yeah, <laughs> for your tea. Yeah, Essential. Yeah, Oh, my mum had this, you can see that tea thing up there, my mum had a smaller version of that. Oh, right, it's a Chinese it's one, isn't it? Yeah. 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 <laughs> it's a drill over here. It's running off an electric motor, would you believe? Oh, it's a bandsaw, isn't it? Is it a bandsaw? Can't tell. No, it's a drill. It is a drill. Or is it? <laughs> I've no idea. Oh, you were the expert. I've no idea what it is actually. Remember those sort of saws? You had a saw between there. It's obviously uh, for cutting complex shapes out. I forget what it's called now. Mitre saw? Might be. Um, curved chisels. There. Oh, yeah. Oh, and obviously a lathe for wood turning which you'd need, obviously, for making the spokes. 
Mm. Or table legs. Yeah, dating back to 1857. Oh, back to the back of the house, there's the stables here. And back. Yeah. There's some uh, rooms you can look in. Some Butler's of the apartment there. The Butler's apartment, yeah. Ironing room. I mean, the one thing they said on the tour was most of the servants lived outside the house. You know, in apartments like this. The butler would have had their own apartment. Yeah. An ironing room and a dairy. Yeah. Wow. Not much changed in here, is it? No. You can't go in there. Milk churn. It's cool in here. Yeah, well it would be. I don't know if you're yeah. making butter, it needs to be. Yeah. What on earth is that? Don't know. It looks a bit evil. I assume it's some sort of I don't know. <laughs> Giant coffee <laughs> machine. You read all of that. <laughs> <laughs> it says it was designed to be cool and hygienic, whilst the dairy's location between the warm drying room and the ironing room may seem strange. It was served to moderate the extremes of temperature which meant that the maximum cream could be extracted from the milk. Uh, there's a cool limestone surface all the way around. Uh, yeah, keep it cool. All right. Would have had tiles on the wall as well. Yeah, if you get all these things, obviously they had to make their own butter and everything. Mm, maybe that's... That you can't do a click and collect do with it. No, no. in the 1840s. No, you can't. Well, mind, you could send the butler, I suppose, or the butler would send someone else. Yeah. Go down the local shop. There's a drying room. Huh. Got the ironing board there. The ironing boards. I mean, little things, aren't they? Yeah, my mum used to tell me about them when she was a yeah. child, to warm them on the fire and... They used to have coals in them or something like that then. No. There's a reconstruction here of Florence Court in the 1860s. Okay. Oh, Poppy. It's a picture you... here, actually. Patient. You see all the rooms, like I was saying, are un, un, under the house, you see, and the house is up, obviously up here. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So this one, we walk through a lot of these sort of rooms. Some of the rooms would have been quite nice. I mean, that looks like the butler's, oh, I don't know, somewhere else, apart, apartment there. But that would have been the, well, they had the, dining, yeah. the dining hall. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Picture there of the drying room. Doesn't say when, does it? But sort of get the idea. It was like a huge laundry, really. I suppose. Yeah, so you put hang your things up there, wouldn't you? They've got yeah. these great big pulley things yeah, for your sheets and everything. <sighs> Pulleys. And you moan about doing the washing. I don't mind doing it about doing the washing. <laughs> You're the one who moans about doing the washing. I think you just put it in the washing machine and switch it on. Done and just leave it. And, and that's yeah. yeah, that's job done, isn't it? Yeah. <clears throat> I'm going to get some stick for that remark, am I? <laughs> In the washing room. There's annoying flying here as well. It's hot and cold here. This is the way we wash our clothes. That's a wasp. Oh, blimey, go away. It's a bee. It made me it's jump. A bee, is it? It's a oh, bee. Right. Don't mind a bee. <laughs> it's just a bee looking for something. Double hand. <laughs> Double handy. Ideal for silks, hosiery and lingerie. Just the right size to fit a pocket, pail or lavatory. Okay. Made in Columbus Washboard, Logan, Ohio. And press. And that was the laundry court. This is the laundry yard. 
Well, quite a lot just go to the laundry, isn't it? Yeah, oh yeah. Could we just have a washing machine and a tumble dry? <laughs> I guess if the weather was nice, you'd hang it out, up, out here. Well, I think, uh, yeah, I suppose so. Yeah, in the back of the house here. I think we've got to go back through there and... Yeah. Okay. On we go. Well, it's a fascinating place. I mean, I'm glad I did the tour. I mean, obviously, I couldn't bring you anything about the, about the inside of the house, but it was interesting enough. But really enjoyed the, uh, the walk round as well. Yeah. There's a cattle yard here. Uh, obviously, the house. I'm going to have a quick look at the cattle yard and then perhaps see if we can get something to drink. Perhaps it'll be a cup of tea. Cattle yard was originally known as the fold yard. Fold yard. Closure for sheep. Alterations of the early 19th century. So it transformed into a cobbled area for keeping dairy cows, ponies, horses and pigs. Mid 19th century, a piggery was built in the centre of the yard, surrounded by open cattle shelters, saddlery, and feed houses. To the east, a small section of the yard was converted into staff lodgings. The old entrance to the yard to the east was blockaded and a bull house created. Okay. So, obviously, uh, some modern instruments are being kept here now as well. Yeah. yeah, okay. A cup of tea. <laughs> Can't be a cup of tea when we've been on a long walk. 